Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and today I want to tell you about what remains of Edith Finch. I played this right at the very end of the year, literally on New Year's Eve, and after completion, I was actually sad that I hadn't found it sooner. I remember seeing the trailer for it and being very interested, as I knew there would be an emphasis on death and stories, but somehow it slipped past my radar because I was playing Breath of the Wild. But I finally picked it up when it went on holiday sale, and I want to share why I find this game so appealing. And before we go any further, there will be spoilers. I want to give some minor analysis, and to do this, I'm going to have to use some of the stories as examples, so just keep that in mind. What Remains of Edith Finch is a narrative-driven game that uses storytelling, gameplay mechanics, music, and a variety of visuals and movement to create a collection of short stories. The stories are meant to shed light on the odd events that cause the members of the the Finch family their tragic demises, and they are each told in their own unique way. To be quite frank here, I've never been a big fan of first-person games, because they scare me. Look, Gone Home frightened me, Mist frightened me, I don't know what it is, but I read that Edith Finch was not exactly scary, at least not in a jump scare way, so I made an exception. The first thing you see is someone with the journal of Edith Finch. Once they open it, we become the character of Edith. Pretty much right away, I'm very drawn to the world. We begin outside, where a trail leads to the Finch's bizarrely structured house. It's really beautiful, relaxing. As Edith speaks, her dialogue floats to and fro onto the screen in various places. And as this was happening, I thought, yeah, I know what kind of experience I'm in for. And I don't mean that in any negative sense, I just figured it would be a pretty standard interactive novel type of a thing, and I was ready for that, eager to get into an engaging story. And there is a big emphasis on story, but as I went through it, I found myself pleasantly surprised at several points. As I made my way into the house, I felt that familiar sense of exploration that I usually feel when I'm playing an adventure game. This house is really cool and full of detail. As you look at items and around rooms, you get descriptions about various things, and information about Edith's former family members who inhabited the house. What we know immediately is that Edith is the last living person in the family, and as she explores the house, she documents their stories in her journal. The first story you witness is Molly's, who was Edith's great aunt. As we find her shrine, which are marked by these portraits painted onto a slice of tree, Molly begins narrating her story about how she died, and now we are in control of her. She was sent to bed without dinner, and describes that she woke up very hungry, hungry enough to eat gerbil food, toothpaste, and what appears to be holly berries, which I'm not sure if they're real or plastic, but after eating them, we find a bird outside the window and promptly go after it. It's at this point I thought Molly's death would be just falling out the window and I'd have my first explanation, but to my surprise, we turned into a cat. And now I'm controlling this cat and we're jumping around a tree in an attempt to eat a bird. And the descriptions get a little unsettling, especially coming from a 10-year-old. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. After catching the bird, we turn into an owl, and we have to pounce rabbits, then into a shark, and finally into a sea monster with a thirst for sailors. And after I devoured a few of them, I realized I was going to like this game. It started out as this melancholy exploration of a weird-looking house, and turned into this kind of hallucination, and I really did feel my emotions getting a little ruffled. As I continued to explore the house, I found a few secret passages to get to the next room. Even though this isn't meant to be a scary game, the passageways and structure of the house House did feel eerie. I kept expecting a ghost to pop out somewhere and scare the shit out of me. Some family member stories are more succinct, like this account of a little boy trying to swing over a branch. Despite being a shorter story, it is equally as impactful as the longer ones. Another story that really sticks out is Barbara Finches, who was a child star, notable for her roles in horror films and her praiseworthy scream. Her story comes in the form of a comic book, and is narrated by a Crypt Keeper-like character. Old Jack here, with another ghastly tale, inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it The Surprise Ending of Barbara Finch. It's a great homage to horror. Even the name Barbara is very clever, as I kept thinking of Night of the Living Dead. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I was expecting to just be told the story, and the majority of the controls would just be me turning the pages of the comic while the narration just kind of rolls along. But suddenly, I realize that nothing is happening, and the screen is focused on a panel. And I say out loud, wait a second, am I, am I controlling this right now? 
I think this is a really excellent way of storytelling. The music is a nod to Halloween, the movement through the panels are slow and controlled, and the change in art style is perfect. It kind of takes you out of the main story for a moment and completely immerses you in this story. I was not expecting it, and I was impressed by how well it worked. Barbara's story is also one of the most ambiguous in terms of how it relates to her actual death. There are a few stories in here that are a bit more obvious, such as one character getting hit by a train, or another getting hit by a debris, Barbers can really have a few explanations. And I really like that. I like that some sections of the story are really straightforward and others aren't. It gives you something to think about long after the experience is over. I'd like to showcase another really effective story involving the youngest of the Finches to die. Gregory is just a baby and he is shown taking a bath. Despite this story having a tragic end, the gameplay itself is really pleasant as you take control of Gregory's toys, making them hop and jump around the tub to Tchaikovsky's Waltz of the Flowers. You reminded me so much of Calvin. <laughs> You really do get the sense that you were in the imagination of a baby. And I love how the controls and the music work together to give you this interesting yet sad experience. But the story I connected with the most was Lewis Finch's, Edith's older brother. His story is told through the perspective of his psychiatrist who had written his mother a letter about how he died. When we start the story, we're working at a cannery where Lewis's job is beheading fish. I'm controlling this, moving the fish under the guillotine and then tossing them away. As the psychiatrist details Lewis's descent into what is described as a fantasy world, a little thought bubble appears on the left side of the screen. It took a few seconds to realize that as I was beheading the fish, I was now controlling this little fantasy character that has been preoccupying Lewis's mind. You have to keep beheading the fish while you walk this character through this game-like grand adventure, and it's, it's really cool, you guys. It's just really, really cool. As this went on, I felt myself autopiloting, getting rid of the fish and going through his daydreams. The longer this went on, the more the fantasy took precedence and eventually filled the entire screen. Near the end of this story, there's a transition where you are now playing the fantasy character, and we are now on the outside looking at Lewis, who is now mindlessly performing the actions of his job, but obviously lost in his head. The gameplay here becomes meta and surreal in a way. I began to mindlessly do these actions while becoming more and more focused on the adventure happening on the left, which is exactly the feeling you're meant to have. We relate to Lewis as we see him robotically working, forgetting all about his job because of the story he made up in his head to cope with reality. This section reminded me of an adventure game called Sanitarium. There's a level where you're creating this make-believe setting to get past things in real life, and the things you do in that setting happen in reality as well. In Lewis's daydream, he bows his head down to be crowned. In reality, while doing this, he is killed by the machinery in the cannery. This was extremely well done, and I personally think it was the most powerful section of the game. And I think the controls here really served their purpose in creating that connection between you and the character. It's not an easy task to work with that many elements to create something artful without being pretentious or boring. And trust me, I went to a private arts college, so I've seen plenty of pretension, but I never felt that way about what remains of Edith Finch. When you find and complete everyone's stories, Edith will share her own. I won't give away too many end spoilers here, but I will say that this is a story people are going to want to decipher. We're not exactly sure why the Finches were cursed to die the way they did, or if it was a curse at all, but there's a lot to learn just by exploring and looking at everyone's personal items in the house. After you finish the game, you can revisit the chapters individually, and I think that's very much worth doing because it'll help you to know the characters a little bit more, and you can start tying bits and pieces together to come to your own conclusions as to why things happened the way they did. Out of all the games that fit into the interactive novel category, this is probably my favorite. I think it did really interesting things visually that kept my attention, the settings are very intriguing and packed with detail, and the way you interact with the game makes you feel like you're looking through the eyes of whoever you're playing. I had watched some gameplay before I actually picked up the controller. I played this on my PS4 and it looked intriguing enough, but to really get that full stimulus, you need to go through it yourself. I didn't think it was as sad as other people found it. I understand why it would be emotional to some, especially since each story is going to resonate with different people, but I found it more unsettling and melancholy versus feeling sad or like I might cry. And I'm glad for that. I didn't necessarily want Want something just outright sad. With narrative driven games, I'm always eager for a range of emotion, and I think that's what I got here. I truly think developers and writers can learn something from how What Remains of Edith Finch tells a story, and I definitely recommend playing it. 
This is a shorter experience, I finished it in about two hours, but I did replace some of the chapters for quite a while afterwards. It's definitely worth picking up because it really packs a punch and does a lot within those few hours. If you have played it, let me know what you think. In fact, leave some Barber theories in the comments because I keep reading the same ones over and over online and I want to hear some new ones. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Oh hello, if you want to see more videos by me, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. You know you want more of this. If you want to support me, check out my Patreon campaign, and if you want to tweet Barbara theories at me, my social media information is in the description. Just, uh, don't tweet too much at me, alright? As always, I'll see you guys in the next one.